if anyone thinks they can plan three years out in the tech future, uh, they're probably somewhat delusional or completely delusional, but, but let me digress there. Uh, seriously, like, you know, just given the velocity of change in technology that we've seen and continues to increase, I think striving to plan out like the next 12, maybe 18 months um, and going into that with eyes wide open that you'll need to kind of ebb and flow with, with various uncertainties, such as the current COVID-19 situation we're in, like you have to factor that into your plan and, and not make it so rigid. Hello, and welcome to a whole new episode of Engadi Engage. I'm your host, Jeremy D'Souza, and today we have Mike Kyle gracing our show with his presence. But before we begin our interview, allow me to give you a quick introduction to the magic of Engadi. Engadi is the world's leading multilingual no code chatbot platform available across 14 channels with 25,000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Ingadi has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc.com, TechWorld, CIO Magazine, and many others. We run the Ingadi blog, video channel, and the Ingadi Engage podcast, receiving upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest. Mike is the CTO of Emirates and holds positions like executive technologist, strategy advisory, and many others for many other companies. He has 25 plus years of experience in technology executive leadership, and he specializes in domains such as organizational health, cloud architecture, security, SaaS cloud deployments, metadata, monitoring, alerting, visualization, performance tuning, scalability, and many more. Before starting with our interview, here's a quick announcement. We have something special for the entire audience coming up at the end of this interview. So stick around. And Mike, we're really thrilled to have you here with us today. Thanks for having me. Do you believe the current crisis would uh, accelerate organizational plans for moving systems to the cloud? So my general view is um, proper cloud architectures allow for greater agility and resiliency, which are needed in the best of times. And those needs are certainly now amplified with the, the current global situation. So I absolutely believe we'll see an increase in the velocity of organizations moving to, to cloud native deployments and kind of transforming their application infrastructure and architectures. Okay. And uh, in addition to you know, moving to the cloud, do you think that workplaces and businesses of tomorrow will start leveraging AI and automation to a greater extent, even though they still seem to be somewhat in their infancy? Uh, they're certainly on, on the buzzword hype cycle, but first I, I'd like to separate out kind of the definitions uh, and automation uh, away from a artificial intelligence and machine learning as too often they're used interchangeably uh, and conflated. So while AI may enable smarter automation, they most certainly aren't the same. Yeah. So, so having said that, I think we're already seeing some startups such as MoveWorks in the IT space that are using artificial intelligence techniques to help solve IT help desk issues and mitigate against future ones. Um, and, these autom and then automation techniques will be used to power some of the mundane repetitive tasks and then free up your human resources to perform more meaningful tasks and, and do innovation. Yeah, absolutely. We'll probably see an evolution in uh, the actual job profiles rather than seeing people do mechanical work at this point. Yeah, definitely. So uh, what's your take on uh, the fact that marketing is increasingly driven by data now? And what are the gaps that need to be filled in the offerings available on the market as platform solutions right now? So, so first a disclaimer, I'm an investor and advisor to a Boston-based company called Xylotech. Uh, and they, along with some others, are using customer data to allow companies to have a more holistic data-driven view of the customers and be proactive instead of reactive. I think many of the prior solutions we've seen were not nearly real-time enough and historic views of your customers isn't very compelling. And I think now, um, much with the cloud migration topic we talked about, 
understanding your customer and delivering a great customer experience digitally is going to be paramount going forward. Just the world's probably going to be in a different space post pandemic, and this will be even more required. So real time data is going to be taking the cake. It's probably going to be way more important at this point, right? I mean, you're going to have a split second for a customer to make a decision whether to go with you or so, or a competitor. And Absolutely. being able to deliver you know, fast digital experiences will be the key to winning that engagement. Makes sense. And uh, <laughs> since we're trying to speed everything up over here, do you think um, even customer support will be getting speeded up, uh, especially with uh, conversational intelligence? And the future is going to be dominated by self-service and bots playing an important role? What do you see over here? So, so given my work as an executive technologist for Palo Alto Strategy Group um, team on doing tech due diligence, I've seen a fair number of companies that are leveraging intelligent bots to enhance and deliver a great customer experience without needing to scale out the human capital to meet kind of the, the elastic demands that customer engagements require. And I think now, uh, the intelligent bots and workflows powered by artificial intelligence can help a customer make a decision or reach an answer much quicker. So once again, going back to the, the digital customer experience, that will be a differentiator. So I think anybody that has a need to provide this should look at intelligent bots to first augment and then transform. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure it uh, speeds the entire process up because, well, you, going and calling customer services is definitely not what someone's looking forward to. We just want to get it done as fast as we can. Right? We just want the answer. We don't want to be on, uh, on a call on hold with bad music or uh, dead air. It's, it's a bad, frustrating experience. And, you know, one minute on hold seems like 10 minutes of, like, normal time. Yeah, Definitely. Um, so, do you have any uh, interesting examples of uh, companies using these bots in like a in a fun way? I've not seen any fun ways. Like the ones I've seen are are very uh, enterprise focused, like in the banking industry or like cable providers, where you need to answer technical questions and get an answer quickly, or help somebody like how do I open a bank account or credit card account. So I think there's probably opportunities and I'm sure there's companies, I'm sure you guys have seen it out there. I just haven't. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, so uh, what would your recommendation be uh, to someone planning an IT strategy? What do you think uh, they should be doing while picking up a tree of plan? So my personal view is if anyone thinks they can plan three years out in the tech future, uh, they're probably somewhat delusional or completely delusional, but but let me digress there. Uh, seriously, like you know, just given the velocity of change in technology that we've seen and continues to increase, I think striving to plan out like the next twelve, maybe eighteen months, um, and going into that with eyes wide open, that you'll need to kind of ebb and flow with with various uncertainties, such as the current COVID nineteen situation we're in, like you have to factor that into your plan and and not make it so rigid. And I think, you know, applying some chaos engineering patterns to strategy going forward is probably, at least for how I think about it, is the proper approach. Like you want to have an overall strategy, but you don't want to be so tightly bound to that, that you can't um, maneuver when you need to. Um, Seeing that everything's going to be changing, we're getting new technology faster than we ever have before. What do you believe is the tech stack of the future? Let's say that the revolution will not be televised. Uh, As as soon as any stack is viewed as the chosen one, there is something new to replace it better. There's been WAMP, LAMP, MEAN, uh, and several others. But, you know, having said that, I think uh, Kubernetes and container orchestration has shown to have pretty solid foundation and legs. And I think along with a true microservices architecture uh, where you augment with some serverless or Lambda functions uh, is probably the the tech stack or building blocks for the next um, one to two years at least. 
And then I'm sure there'll be some repackaging of prior technology uh, with some new marketing um, glam around it that will come in and disrupt that. Okay. So I think the uh, takeaway for businesses would be uh, to adapt to the new, the new stuff which works for them quite fast, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to be adaptable. Um, you know, you, you don't want to keep changing your overall strategy, but you want it to be flexible enough that if some global situation does happen, you're able to respond. Do you have any other thoughts that you'd like to leave our audience with? Uh, this, this will sound uh, cliche, but I think it most likely is, but I think now is a really great time for entrepreneurs to come in and solve large, meaty problems. I think it's in times like these that great ideas emerge. And those who have you know, tremendous conviction and drive will be the ones who succeed. Definitely. I'm, I'm sure that we've all seen a lot of the great companies which we have. They've actually come out in times of crisis, right? Right. Those who provide compelling solutions that solve you know, both for the crisis and in the future will be the ones that you know, will be the, the apples and Amazons of tomorrow. Perfect. I love this interview. It was really insightful, especially into the fact that businesses need to be flexible and adaptive. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thank you very much for having me. It's been fun. It's been great. Okay. So now, as we told you, we do have something special for the entire audience. Businesses are certainly looking forward to getting back to office. But if you don't plan it out right, that could be a recipe for disaster. So we at Ingadi have actually created a comprehensive ebook on the whole return to office scenario. And it's available completely free in the resources section of www.ingadi.com. So go check it out. It might help you. Thanks for joining us. Ingadi Engage will be back with a new expert and a new episode really soon. This is your host, Jeremy D'Souza, signing off here.